You have to ask the hard questions. And one of those questions is, what is your retention rate? How many people been in this role? Is this a new role? This would tell you a lot about the manager. Mm -hmm. And if they find you as a candidate of choice, and this is what I did with the current employer that I had, um, I actually asked, can I speak with people that have worked with you on your team? Hi, family. I'm TK Morgan, and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Morgan, thank you so much for saying yes to having a conversation with me today. Yes, I am so excited. <laughs> I'm super excited for this conversation. Um, I wanted to have this particular conversation because we are living in the middle of a pandemic, recession on a rise, or we're living in a recession, depending on who you're talking to. And, you know, people are struggling right now. You know, people yes. are being laid off, furloughed. Um, and people, I, I think we so much has happened in the last few months that we forget that people were unemployed before the pandemic. So the pandemic yes. has probably exacerbated their, you know, their their stress levels, if you will. And so we're gonna talk about careers. Like I really want to talk about that because I feel like at the top of the pandemic, you just saw all type of memes and videos across social media. Like, you know, you need to start a business right now. If you ain't starting <laughs> a business right now, they you don't have, you know. You're not confident. You're not consistent. And it's just like, come on now. Everybody don't want to start a business. Like some people want to move up the corporate ladder. Correct. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about that today. Let's, but let's talk about it. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. So i like to start off every conversation. We're just talking about how I come to know the person that I am having a conversation with. And this conversation is no different. So um, you guys, Morgan and I, <laughs> I'm smiling. If you're watching the video, I'm smiling really, really hard because I swear, <laughs> I, I swear Morgan could have been on a BFF episode because I feel like we have known each other for that long. And it's literally only been like a few months. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We just been talking and chatting um, on Instagram for just the last few months. But this is how, but this is how, this is how we met. I met Morgan because I had a conversation with Shahara on the podcast. If you guys haven't listened to that episode, you definitely have to listen to that episode because Shahara yes. broke down how we can, you know, communicate better to tell people how they can support us. And this is super important. And she also broke down, you know, how we can use our networking skills to build a support system that we need to operate in our purpose. Yes. And so as a way to promote the episode, shout out to Shahara, because she's, oh, yes. now, as a way to promote the mm -hmm. episode, she was like, we should go live on Instagram. Like that was her idea. And I was just like, are you willing to do that? Cause I'm always down for going live. And she was like, girl, yes, whatever is needed, you know, to help bring people to the podcast. And so we went live on the podcast and Morgan watched the live. And so yes. I think I sent you a message just to say, thank you so much for watching the live or, or um, following me or something like that. I reached out to yes. Morgan just to say, thank you. And it just took off from there. We've been talking and chatting ever since. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> like literally every day, you guys. And that's and that's no exaggeration. Like literally every day since May. Yes. Yeah. Since like yeah. since like May. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we just became really good friends. And the crazy thing is we stay in the same city. Same city and state. Same city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so just from talking to morgan and getting to know her um because she's the bomb.com you guys she Thank is the you. perfect person to have this conversation about careers because morgan you know works in the male dominated industry which 
I'm pretty sure we're going to get into all of that. And she has really like moved up the corporate ladder. Like I am so impressed with Morgan. I'm like, I'm just blessed to be in your circle, girl. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Take that as a compliment. Thank you. It is. You're welcome. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to talk about it. But to start the conversation off, Morgan, I really want you to talk about the reason behind your name. And I think this is so interesting because as women, women of color, who child, when those names come across on those resumes, yes. like our, our names can like shut the door for us before we can even have an opportunity. Like people can see our resumes depending on what our, our name is and like literally throw it in the trash. Just based absolutely. I hate to say that, but it's a reality. It's a reality, and you know, Morgan got a whole story about that. And she I do. shared it with me, and I want her to share it with you guys. So tell us about it. Absolutely. Morgan. So a little bit about my name. My mother uh, went to the hospital with two names, Liz and Ashley. I was my parents' firstborn child. So it was a really big thing in our family. Um, my father is the oldest out of six kids. And so when they got there, it was a big celebration. And they asked my mother, uh, which her name is Jean. And I was like, Jean, what are you going to name your daughter? She was like, Liz, because her middle name is Elizabeth. My grandmother's name was Eloise. And Ashley, because my mother used to watch the soaps. Like every mother watched the soaps back in the 70s and the 80s, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a lady named Ashley on the soaps, and she loved that name. Um, so the, the family, the, the women of the family, my aunts, was like, don't give that baby a simple name. You know, typical family from the South, uh, mm -hmm. Southern Mississippi, give her something unique. And so my mother felt compelled to conform uh, to something unique. And at that time, back in the 70s, uh, I'm telling my age, uh, Tamika was a very common name from, for African American females. And so at the age of six years old, I remember having a conversation with my mother at the dinner table saying, hey, do I supposed to change my name when I grow up? And she was like, no, you keep the same name. And she's like, why do you ask that? And I said, well, there's a girl named Gwendolyn in my classroom and a girl named Beatrice, which are very mature names, right? You think about a newborn child coming into this world. Well, what's your baby name? Well, Beatrice or Gwendolyn. So, but that child grows up to become an adult. And so that's how my mind was at six years old. And my mom said, no, you keep the same name. So moved on, uh, graduated from high school, went to college, pledged one of the best sororities ever. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And there were four uh, Tamikas on my pledge line. And so everybody started calling me by my last name, which is Morgan. And the whole entire campus, my friends, uh, they called me by my last name. And so that's, that's what people call me today. But as I was a uh, pledge in undergrad, uh, people called me by my last name. And then when I graduated from graduate school and started working in the real world, uh, of course, my, everybody addressed me by my first name. However, when I had my first promotion and I moved from Atlanta, Georgia to Amarillo, Texas, and the announcement went out for my promotion, my customer saw me and she was like, oh, I thought you were going to be Asian. And I was like, you got Asian out of Tamiki? <laughs> so anyway, uh, I also ran into situations where people could not pronounce my name. So I just told them to call me by my last name. So fast forward through my career, uh, I would say maybe like the seventh and a half year mark. I realized I was reaching that glass ceiling. And I realized it at a very early point in my career to go ahead and get out when I could. And so as I was applying for jobs, my, I had my name Tamika, my middle initial is K, and my last name is Morgan. So my middle name is Kishé. I know it's Tamika Kishé Morgan, uh, but I go by TK. And this is where it all began for my career. So as I was applying for jobs with Tamika, middle initial K, last name is Morgan, I realized I was not getting interviews, I was not getting callbacks, and I looked at my resume to see what can I change. So I was like, okay, I'll use TK Morgan. I work for a male, uh, Anglo-Saxon male-dominated company at the time, 
And I had all of that experience. And once I changed my name on my resume, I started getting callbacks. I started getting interviews. Uh, the opportunities came in endless. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I realized that, you know, I learned how to beat the system. If you, if you can't beat them, join them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and I had friends that say, oh, you know, your mother gave you that name. And I was like, no, my mother did not give me this name. It was actually a name that was kind of forced upon her from the family to give me something unique. Uh, it did come from the family. My sister name is Lindsay. She was named after our great uncle, my grandfather's brother. And my brother name is Lee. He's named after our father. So everyone had a family name. Um, Tamika is not a family name. Um, but so that was part of my journey in corporate America. Once I, I changed my name to TK Morgan, the opportunities came endless. Uh, immediately people thought I was um, a white male uh, prior to them meeting me. Uh, but when they met me and they realized, oh, she's smart, she's beautiful, she's intelligent. Um, and my name was easy to pronounce, then um, my career trajectory just increased tremendously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I hate the fact that number one, they automatically thought you was a white man. Like, yes. And then once you got there, you had to prove yourself that you was really smart, but it's like, but you knew I was smart before you met me though. <laughs> like, why, does right. that, why, why, why is that changing now? Now that you see me, but you know, that's, that's the world that that's the world that we live in and you you guys sitting here listening to tk's story i know some of you are probably thinking well you know i'm not going to like change my name you know because i need to accept my name you know what you're you're absolutely right you're totally right but if you want to right you know, i just thought this was a uh you know a great story to share with you guys because if that's what you want to do then do it because it's not like in Morgan chime in because it's not like Morgan thinks less of herself. She didn't right doesn't necessarily like the name and like she said, it's not even a family name. It's not even a name that her mom really wanted her to <laughs> to have right. in the first place. Right, and you got to think about it too. I I did this maybe like twelve years ago, so uh, so things times have changed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even to this day. So I I did that about twelve years ago, and one thing I learned from my parents: you have to do what you have to do to get to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. I, I did what I needed to do to get to where I needed to go and prove myself because, you know, and another thing that I learned from my parents is what you go through in life is not for you, it's for others. So what I'm going through in life, I'm, I'm you know, making that pathway for the next uh, young lady or the next brother that looks like me. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, so that's how I see it. But, you know, having TK... Uh, I would say TK Morgan is a very, very strong name and people do not judge me before they meet me. Mm -hmm. uh, I even had friends, uh, African-American females, as I relocated, I've, I've lived in eight different states. And one of a good girlfriend said, hey, before I met you, I thought you was going to be just this urban chick. And I was like, okay. And she was like, you're not like that. And I was like, okay. So, I mean, even you had that whole bias with your with my name within a, even within our community so um does it hurt my feelings sometimes no it's just awareness and people that are going through that same situation with their name and having a difficult time finding careers um you know i i share my story with them to kind of help them get through that hurdle yeah yeah because if if it's like you say if it's what you have to do then you know you have to you know you have to do what you have to do and you know right. um going up the corporate ladder you know it's a whole it's a whole politics game you know when it comes to you know when it comes to corporate i'm pretty sure we're going to go into that as well because yeah you have moved up the ladder in your career like i know you had to like you know um strategize with politics corporate politics and and, and stuff like that unfortunately because that's just that's just the reality for us right now. right just the reality exactly so in your professional opinion um how should professionals be looking for a job right now like how can they pivot and shift their job search right now because like you said you have to do what you have to do and living in this pandemic you know in the middle of a recession you know we have to do what it is that we have to do so like what 
what can we do in your professional opinion to pivot or shift? Yeah, so part of my, outside of my nine to five, my corporate mm -hmm. job, I do have my passion, which is called Tuesday at 1030. Mm -hmm. And I have been helping young professionals that, that has been out of work even prior to the pandemic um, and trying to help them um, gain confidence and, and look at their skill sets. So like, mm -hmm. if, if you had any job in the world, what would it, what would it be? Just really identifying what do you really want to do? What is your passion? And then understanding your skill sets. Um, so a couple of young ladies that I just recently have, one just got an opportunity with Amazon in HR. So I was so proud of her. And she went through, I mean, it was the whole pandemic interview, like the virtual interview. So we're looking at lighting, we're looking at clothing. She's okay, should I wear this? What should I say? You know, prepping in advance, sending free read in advance, you know, your resume, your one pager, your, your uh, 306090, sending that the night before. So they're not, you're making it easy on uh, the company that's interviewing you. Uh, but the young lady, uh, one, of, one of the young ladies that I was mentoring, she has been out of work for about six months and almost given up. She was young, just recently graduated from college, maybe like a year ago. And just so happened, and this is where the, the network comes in, right? So I had a good friend that worked in corporate. I mean, he worked with some uh, major, major companies, uh, Fortune 500 companies, and he just decided to venture out on his own. He owns a company called Fourth Avenue uh, Market. And he was just kind of catching up with me, like I need someone in operations and logistics. I had the perfect individual. It was a young lady that was mentoring. She was a operation and logistic manager for Alta Beauty Company. Yes. And she was also making some beauty products on the side that was part of her passion. This is me mentoring her for a full year. And I said, oh my God, I have the perfect person. And mind you, during the time that she was out of work, we were preparing. And she took some time uh, last week and called me and said, hey, I, I didn't understand why I had to go through this whole analysis paralysis, but now every time you send someone to me and I get this interview, I'm already ready. So she doesn't have to prepare because she's already ready for, for the job. Anyway, I prepped her so well this past year that the guy that my friend that has his own company hired her. He didn't hire her based off oh, I've been mentoring this young lady. She needs a job. He hired her because she was the right person for the job. And so her mom and her father thanked me for helping their daughter, especially during these trying times. Yeah. Um, her mother's a single mom and she's working day and night just trying to keep food on the table. And so I was just really, really happy that I was able to change a young person's life based off all the experience that I've had. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying, yeah. wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so I would say right now, some of the key things that I shared with people mm -hmm. uh, is making sure that you are on LinkedIn, making sure that your page is open to everyone. So my page is open just to my connections. Um, there is an option where you can set your privacy to open to the world. Mm -hmm. And if there's companies that you would lo love to work for, like P&G, uh, ExxonMobil, Shell, Amazon, follow those companies. And those companies, they're going to write great articles. They're going to have great uh, videos. Share those videos. Make a comment. Tag someone. Um, and, and do that on a daily basis. And so you can get recognized by these companies because they're going to be like, oh, TK Morgan is sharing our content. Let me check out her page. Let me see what... Uh, what uh, skill set she has. In addition to one thing that I do uh, for those that are not working, that are looking for work, if I see opportunities on LinkedIn, you know, sometimes like Amazon may post, like we're looking for our operation leader in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, please apply here. And I will make a comment to maybe that recruiter, just say his name is uh, John Doe. And so I was like, hey, John, I know the perfect candidate. At, and then what I do is I'll tag the person that I know that is out of work. And then that person make a comment. And so that goes into the whole algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's just a new way of just really uh, having employers to, to see you. 
uh, that's just a, a new way to kind of and connect with people too because they may send you a connection or you can send them a connection and then after that if you see opportunities that on their website send um, that person an email but also say hey I'm hoping to get your help here's the job number that I apply for do you know who the hiring manager or the recruiter is you know that is very helpful versus saying hey I'm looking for an opportunity do you have any openings I would say go ahead uh, build a profile with that company apply for those jobs and then when you reach out to that person mm -hmm. you apply with a job number and ask them uh, can they connect you with the hiring manager or the recruiting manager Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that. You know, LinkedIn is a, I, I think, a underutilized <laughs> platform, probably. Yes. You know, especially in the in the entrepreneurial space. You know, um, so that's good. That's really good advice. You know, and and by being on LinkedIn, right? That's forcing us to be online, and this whole mm -hmm. pandemic has forced you know a lot of companies who probably were not so much online before like they're on they're online now so even correct for the the pandemic if linkedin wasn't you know like the top of your list you know option you probably really want to put it up there because companies are online like these managers and these vps or whomever the people that's going to give you the job like they're online they're forced to be online because we're because we're in this pandemic so with that being said tk how should someone show up on a Zoom call? Because I've seen, I, I want to say heated, well, not heated, very passionate conversations, if you will, <laughs> on LinkedIn about how people should show up on a Zoom call. Because, you know, we're in the middle of this pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. so everybody's life is turned upside down. So mm -hmm. people who are on the other side of the Zoom call should understand that I'm showing up in just like a regular t-shirt for this interview. Right. And it's like, come on. I, I don't know. In my opinion, <laughs> I think that we should be, we should be professional. From Correct. We should be professional. But in your personal opinion, what's, what's your take on it? I say dress how you want to be addressed. Ooh. Period. I love that. Yes. Yes. Um, you see that I'm on this call with you and I have been working from home in a pair of cargo pants and a uh a dry fit t shirt. Mm -hmm. I got my stuff together, I took another shower, I put on a business dress, I did my face, I put on some earrings. And I'm sitting in one of the rooms in my home, but I'm dressing how I want to be addressed on this call with you. So um, I would say for any of you, and, and this is what I've helped uh, a couple of people that's like, oh my God, what do I do? I say, find the perfect room in the house two days before or the day before. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it the day of because it can get stressful. Yeah. Um, and find really good lighting. So if you have a room in your home that have light walls, make sure that you use that room so you can actually, so the interviewer can, and can see you. Um, even going into our darker hue girls, uh, with me, I'm a darker complexion. I don't want to be behind a dark green wall. Um, cause that means I got to have a lot of lighting, light. I want to make sure that I have the right colors on because you got to think about it. Now you're on video. So color is important. Even when I got on this call with you, I was, you know, I didn't want to put on a, a black suit or brass or navy, dark navy. I needed something bright and I needed to come into one of the brightest rooms in my home. So all of that is important, even when you're interviewing. Um, so one of the steps I would say, make sure the night before or the day before you, or two days before that you pick out your outfit, you actually put it on, uh, do a light cream, do uh, a, a jacket, a light gray jacket, because colors matter when you're on camera and with the lighting. And then find a room in your home and actually practice uh, talking to the camera because a lot of people are not uh, used to talking to inside, you know, directly to the camera. You don't have to look at directly at the person's face, but you can look directly at the camera and you can actually just focus on yourself. So it doesn't seem like, oh my God, I'm staring right at their face, but you're looking right into the camera and bring your energy with you, uh, mm -hmm. making sure you have a good meal the day, uh, 
the morning of mm -hmm. coffee. Uh, if you're in the house with, uh, with chaos and what I've learned whenever there's chaos in the house during these calls, just say you uh, have, a child or your husband accidentally walked in mm -hmm. and you handle that with grace and style, that employer is going to say, wow, she works well under pressure. She works well when, when life pivots and they see that on camera. Mm -hmm. So even some of those uh oh episodes inside your home, um, learn how to manage that with grace and don't panic because that's the life that we're living and, and life happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's really good. You know what? I'm glad you said that because some people are probably like worried about that, you know, but if you could just show how you're able to, you know, manage the chaos at the house, if you will, then that's going to transfer over to, you know, to the manager or the, that person that's in front of you. Because like you said, mm -hmm. We're living in the middle of a pandemic. Everybody is at home, right? The person you're speaking to was probably right. in their house where their wife is in the in the background, the other side <laughs> of the camera, you know, <laughs> trying to talk to them. They can relate. So when right. it comes to those type of things, then, you know, yes. But, you know, coming on the camera, I, I like that. You need to look the way that you want to be addressed. Like, I really, I really love that. And, you know, you don't have to have on a, a three-piece suit, but you still need to, I think, look nice. And I also think, too, that, you know, get up before the interview. Like, don't just roll out of bed. Don't take for granted that it's a Zoom call and you just rolling out the bed and hopping on the Zoom call or um, hopping on, you know, the audio version of the call. Because I feel like people can tell when you just getting up, when you grog and you still got that frog in your, you know, in your throat. Or people can tell- Or your face is still swollen. Your face is still swollen. Like, I feel like people can tell if it's not a video call and it's just an audio. Like, I feel like people can tell if you just lounge it on the couch, you know, as opposed to sitting upright, alert, and ready to have conversation. So right. I, I think all of that is important. Those were some, those were some really good tips. I, I love that because the conversation I saw on LinkedIn, yeah, it was like, you know, people should be able to just come how they want to come. And, you know, the companies or whomever just need to just accept that you guys, this is, it's still business. Exactly. Period. This is, this is a person's business. I, I'm sorry. If I'm jumping on a, on a Zoom call and you coming in on a Zoom call in your pajamas, yeah, I'm probably not going to hire you. Put yourself in that person's shoes because it's like you could have at least put on a nice shirt. So if you can't do something as small as putting on a nice shirt for this Zoom call, then what mm -hmm. makes you think that you're going to take the extra step in this position that you're about to interview for? You got Right. Let's. Yeah. Let's think this, let's think this through. And, you know, and, and another note too, like the night before, uh, make sure you have backup devices. You know, we have our cell phone, you have your iPad, you have your laptop, make sure you have multiple, multiple devices before, uh, before the day of your interview. In addition to in advance, that's what platform they're going to use. They may use Zoom. They may use Meet Me. They may use different Skype, micro, uh, you know, uh, Cisco Skype. They may use Microsoft, uh, I am, who knows? So make sure you ask for that in advance and test that on all of your, um, you know, from iPads or tablets and, and phones and computers. Man, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a really good tip because, you know, Zoom just crashed the other day. Like they had a whole problem. I got an email um, with them apologizing and letting us know what happened. So it was a system error or application, you know, error on their part that caused mm -hmm. you know, people not to not to be able to have Zoom calls. So yeah, that's it's really good for you to like test test out your you know your technology beforehand. That that was a really good tip. And so wear pants. <laughs> You know, some people are like, yeah, I just got on a nice shirt and a jacket. And you might have to stand up yeah. with pants. With some pants. It's okay. Yeah, put on some pants. <laughs> <laughs> it don't have to be the matching pants to your, to your outfit. But <laughs> pants put on some pants. Yeah, <laughs> right. <definitely not. laughs> you would think that would 
go without saying, right? But no, right. We need to we need to say that. So let me ask you this: during the interview, what clues can we look for to determine, you know, what's not being said about about a position, right? And this mm-hmm. is something you know that we should be doing anyway regardless of being in the pandemic or not anytime you're interviewing you should be asking key questions that's going to right. give you some type of idea of what to expect in this position because you guys you need to be interviewing that hiring manager just as much as they're interviewing you so they're not absolutely you everything but you have to ask the right questions. So Correct. what clues can we look for and how can we address those during the interview? That's a really great question. And, and some of those questions uh, you want to ask is, why is this opportunity open? Is it open because someone retired? Uh, did someone get a promotion? Um, is this a new opportunity with the company? So you want to start there and then you want to ask about their retention rate. So that lets you know how many people have been hired and how many people have left. And you can ask that from, from HR. It's like, hey, what, what is your retention percentage? That lets you know how long people's been around. You know, the current company that I work for, people have been with this company for over 30 and 40 years. Honey, they, they love it. And so it's, and that's a good sign, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, that people stay with companies for a long time because it's a true indication that, not to say we're not going to have hardships with, you know, dealing with a bad manager or dealing with a bad colleague. You're going you're gonna to run into that. But overall, it's the care of, it's what, you know, the company caring for their employees. And, and people do not leave their companies. They leave their managers. Um, and so... And, and that's, that's, that's one thing too. So that manager say, oh yeah, well, we, we filled this role last year and, and, and Sue is no longer with us and we, we haven't been able to keep someone there. So you want to ask their retention and how long the last person was in that role. And if that person is still with the company, because that's critical for knowledge transfer. Mm, people don't leave their company. They leave, they leave their managers. Manager. Wow. That's good. You know, uh, it, it made me think, because right now I'm currently listening to The Memo by mm-hmm. uh, Minda Hartz. And it's a, it's a book about, you know, helping women of color to literally, you know, navigate up the corporate ladder. And mm-hmm. she's given a lot of different personal examples from, from her career, you guys. It's a really good book. Even though I haven't finished it, it's a really good book. So you should definitely check it out. I'll make sure to, right. put, in the, uh, to put it in, in the show notes when you click on Audible um, recommendations. I'll, I'll put it there so you can click and listen to it. But the situations that she had that made her pivot to different positions, it was because of the manager. Yes, yes. Management is important. I've had some amazing managers. I don't care if we sell in snowballs on in Alaska. I want to be with that manager because of that. Yeah. And people go over and beyond. When they have great managers, they go over and beyond for them. You know, it is more than just a, I'm just reporting to you. It, it's, a, it's a relationship. It's a friendship. It's, uh, it's leadership, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so, yeah, I've had some amazing managers in my, in my lifetime, and I, I still keep in touch with them to this day. That's awesome. That that's a that's a great tip. And you also yeah. mentioned um, the retention rate, right? I think that's mm-hmm. a good question to to add. But let me and add people you. don't remember that. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What you just gonna say? No, the retention. So people at top of mind, and that's one of the things that I tell people in the interview when they said, "Do you have any questions?" And do not start asking questions that you can find on their website. Yes, they have healthcare. Yes, they have tuition reimbursement. Yes, they have 401k, they have pension. Do not go in there with questions that you can find on your own. Mm. You have to ask the hard questions. And one of those questions is, what is your retention rate? How many people been in this role? Is this a new role? This would tell you a lot about the manager. Mm. And if they find you as a candidate of choice, and this is what I did with the current employer that I had, 
um, I actually asked, can I speak with people that worked with you on your team? Ooh, did you? Did yes. You? And she put me in touch with the people on our team because she was an awesome manager and she was confident. So did you ask that in the first interview? That's bold. The, yeah. So it was a three part interview. Okay. It was three parts. So, um, about time when I got to the second round, I asked, is it okay that I speak to someone or your team to understand the day-to-day -day responsibilities? Mm -hmm. From there, I asked, what are, what are your thoughts about um, this particular manager? Mm -hmm. How do you feel, is, is, is he or she a micromanager? Uh, easy to work with, um, open to new ideas. So yeah, so because it was a three-part uh, interview process um, and the people that she put me in touch through that whole process, it was people that actually used to work for her and work on her team. And then I asked, will it be okay that I speak to someone that worked with her in the past or working on her team? Mm -hmm. And she was, she was okay with that. And that's, to me, I, I think that's awesome. That is totally, when a manager say, absolutely, you can speak to someone on my team, that gave me reassurance that this person was a good leader. Yep, yep. Because if she wasn't, she would have been, number one, she would have been hesitant. Now, you guys, first off, I hope you guys by now have gone and got pencil and paper because I should have told you guys <laughs> to do that at the beginning of this episode. But that's okay, you know, watch it again and download it two times. Absolutely. To make sure you're writing all this down. But what I wanted to say is, don't be afraid to ask a question like that because you are interviewing them just as much as they are interviewing you. And when they ask you, do you have any questions? Please have a question. Think about it. Do the research. Like TK said, you know, do the research. Don't ask the, the simple questions that you can find on the website. Because I've been in a management position where I had to interview people. And that irks me when nobody has a question. But I'm like, you don't have no questions? No. Right. Because that's telling me you didn't even go to the website and look. You didn't do any research. Like, at right. all. Yeah. Any research. And, and also, I'll... try to ask questions that, that pertain, that could possibly pertain to that position, too. Like, don't be asking me questions and it's a, well, like an accounting related question or something. Right. <laughs> I always tell people when you come, you know, after an interview, you come home and you maybe talk to your significant other or other family members or close friends. And you're just like, man, I should have asked that, man, I should have asked that question. So, you know, some of the things that, of course, the retention rate, we talked about that, but also too asking, uh, when are you looking to fill this role? What's mm -hmm. your timeline? Mm -hmm. uh, based off my skill sets, based off the um, skill sets that are on my resume, do you see any gaps that would hinder me from getting this role? Mm -hmm. You're actually pushing mm -hmm. them into a corner mm -hmm. because you got to go back to the first question. They ask you, do you have any questions? So they have to come, they have to be ready. And a lot of times they're not ready for those questions because it's not common. But those are the questions you want to ask. Yep, yep. And that sets you apart from the other candidates too, you know, because most times if you picked up on what she just said, most times people are not prepared, right? But if you are, then that's going to, that's going to set you apart right there. And that's what you want to do. You want to be set apart. Now you, you ask, you told them, you told us to ask about the retention rate, right? So Follow up question with that. Mm -hmm. so now we're in the middle of, of, of a pandemic and a recession. So should we give the company some type right. of grace to on, you know, because maybe they had to lay off some people. Should we give them some grace when it comes right. to right? Yes. Given that we are in a pandemic, we, you know, you still have to make money to, to feed yourself, your, your family, pay your bills and et cetera. So absolutely uh, give yourself, give the company some grace when it comes to that. Um, and hopefully is a role that you will enjoy because even during the pandemic, taking a job that doesn't fulfill you or doesn't make you happy, uh, you're not going to do a good job. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, but you want to make sure that you find a job that, that fits you even during this pandemic. So yes, I would say give yourself some grace when it, give the company some grace when it comes to the whole retention. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to act that. So 
what's the secret for moving up the the corporate ladder? Because you work in a male dominated industry, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm so I'm so impressed by TK because I'm like, what? Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Black woman, women, like who's doing that? Like what woman is doing this? Morgan. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so so. But thank so you. Up. What's your secret to moving up the the corporate ladder, especially in a male dominated industry? Oh, my secret starts day one on the job. Let me tell you the first two weeks of me starting uh, with my current employer, I met with my HR leader. Um, She had a conversation with me. She said, I didn't hire you for this role. I hired you for the greater, uh, for the opportunities that's a lot further than where you are. And that gave me the boost of confidence that I needed. Oh, it just gave me just a light in my heart. And so as I was talking to her and I was like, okay, so who else do you recommend for me to have a get to know with? So she recommended one person. So I had to get to know with that person, told them about my work experiences, uh, asked them a few questions. And I said, okay, who would you recommend for me to get to know? So that is how I built my network. And I said, do you mind sending an email telling that individual, hey, I met with TK. Um, I want her to reach out to you to set up a guest. Because typically, if you reach out to people that they don't know you, you, even though you work for the same company, if they don't know you, you may not get a response quick. But if someone else do the warm intro, uh, then after that, you start building your network. And then once I start building my network with two or three people, and then every time I met someone, I always ask them, who would you recommend? And I build an Excel spreadsheet of people that I met, and I understood the layout and the, and the uh, infrastructure of the company and places that I can go for my next job. And I kept in touch with those people. And guess what? Within a year, I had four opportunities at my current em- employer. And so they, uh, HR was like, hey, she doesn't have time with company and time on job because you have to be in a role for three to four years before you move forward. I haven't been there a year, but I built my network where people say, oh my God, we got this opportunity. I met this young lady, TK Morgan. Let me give her a call. So that's how it worked. And after every get to know, I always write a handwritten thank you letter, period. It really sets the bar. It is a lost art and it separates you from everyone else. And people remember that. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love that. You know, I don't have a problem with doing that, but you know, I'm half extrovert, half introvert and you are an extrovert. So I know the introverts are like cringing right now. Like, no, say something else, say something else. But but even if you are an introvert, you have to make those connections because people are going to refer people they know. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. You know, if there's two candidates in front of me and they both, you know, are, have the same experience and everything just looks the same, how am I going to pick one or the other? I'm going to pick the one that I have a relationship with, the one that I know, even if it's just one conversation, set yourself right. apart, get, you have to get to know people. I'm not saying that you have to go to every um, networking or happy hour drinks after right. work. That's not what I'm saying, but you have to be strategic because see, because Morgan, she just didn't meet up with anybody. She got relations, yeah. you know, she looked at the infrastructure of the company and, you know, determine who she needs to get to know. Like we, we have to do it. Closed right. mouths don't get fed. Right. So, and in my current bro right now, I, I love my job. I love my manager. I love my team, but guess what? I'm looking for my next opportunity within my current employer. I'm looking at what, what are, what are we doing? What the company is doing next? You know, we're looking at new energies, you know, becoming, sustainability, you know, looking at those opportunities, like, hmm, they may interest me, you know, so starting to build my network then and, and, and looking at other uh, areas of the company, still stand with the same company, but just finding those other opportunities ahead of time. You know, you don't wait until, oh my God, there is a, a reshape or a layoff. You, you start working on that when, when times are good, 
you work on your network. You don't wait until the whole world falls apart. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Or just wait for for somebody to just like give you a promotion because no, because you wouldn't be working for people. I mean, they busy, too. They're probably trying to get their own promotion. Like you have to be your own advocate. You have to know uh, right. or determine where you want to go in your career and you have to be your own best advocate for it. You know, you have to just ask for mm -hmm. it. Just ask for it. You know? Absolutely. So I, I love that. Even during this pandemic, you can still you can still do that, guys. I know at least you know two people who landed six figure jobs in the pandemic, and one of the, those people wasn't even looking for a job. A recruiter mm -hmm. called her. Like, don't you know? Don't be discouraged. Like, yes, it's a lot of layoffs. It's a lot of businesses, you know, filing bankruptcy and and everything. But on the same hand, there's still a lot of companies that are doing well. Correct. Don't, you know, don't be afraid to to ask, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic. Don't be afraid to ask. Right. And and I would say, look at those companies that are in the midst of this pandemic. You know, think of your consumer product companies. Think of Coca Cola. Think of um, craft and food. Think of you know all those companies that's providing products right now. Um, Kimberly Clark, they make, you know, toilet paper and cleaning products and stuff like that. So think of companies that are right now that are serving us in the midst of this pandemic. Amazon, honey, I have to stay, keep stuff out of my cart <laughs> because of Amazon. I do window shopping with Amazon. I just put it in my cart, but I don't check out. <laughs> So I'd be like, and then when it says, oh, it's not available, then I feel good that it's no longer there, so I don't have to buy it. But yeah, think of think of companies like that that is right now that that need employers. They need your skill sets. I love that. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because this is the time where we need to think outside of the box. Right. Like think us think outside of the box because you know those come those service companies that's providing products, like who you say, Kim Lee Clark the ones. Is the ones that made the toilet paper? Yeah. Yeah, no, they're not laying nobody off during this pandemic. Because everybody's still, like, you, it's still hard to find toilet paper out here in the street. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so uh -huh. I would say all the products that you're buying, look on the back to see who's, who's that company and how can I work for them? I mean, P&G makes a lot of the products that we use from Dove Soap to Ivory uh, to Tide Detergent. Um, think of everything that they make and, and find and seek opportunities because those are the companies that need boots on the ground. Man, that's a girl. We can just shut down a podcast right there. Like, that, oh, yeah, I love that right there. That's amazing. You know, I, I, I've been out the corporate, you know, the corporate game for so long, as far as like looking for jobs, you know, right. I feel like not every job is going to be on Indeed. Or hot jobs. I don't even know if hot jobs is still a thing, right? So you're going to have to do your research and look into it. And that's a great way to look into it. Like the, the, the and it's e yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I always tell people, it's easy to find a job with a job. If you have a job, you can get a job. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to look at it as well. Because some people are like, oh, I don't want to take this job. Take it. You know, it's yeah. not the it's not the end all be all. You can take this job, but you can still search and build your skill sets. A lot of times, you know, people don't think about, oh my God, I don't want to do this job. Find opportunities within the job that you don't want to do that you can build your skill sets because the skill sets you can have for the rest of your life. Mm, yeah, and they're yeah. transferable. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, we're coming up on the holiday season, and I know a lot of companies tend to do a hiring freeze right before the holidays. So for people who are still in the market looking for employment, can you give another underutilized gem? Because looking at the back of, of products that we have in our house and, and researching those companies, but is there another underutilized gem for finding the next career opportunity? I would say, you know, just being very honest and transparent uh, when it comes to freezing jobs, there's nothing that you can do about that. Like if there's companies that 
wow, I want to work for this company. A lot of companies right now are freezing job openings. Um, they are freezing raises. They're um, not giving bonuses because they're trying to reserve cash and keep people um, in jobs right now. But I would say seasonal jobs, you know, um, I started thinking about warehouses like Walmart's having distribution center, Amazon having distribution centers, uh, more of those seasonal roles to kind of get you through, uh, to, to try to get you through the holidays. And a lot of times, sometimes those seasonal roles, when you do really, really well, they actually bring you on full time. I've seen people that was contractors mm -hmm. and that contractor job turned into full time because they showed up. Mm -hmm. Regardless, it was hourly regardless it was a contract job they showed up if they had a full-time gig and they got hired on full-time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a good yeah. that's 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 good advice because contract job that's a that's another easy way to kind of like get people in and test them out to see if they even want to mesh with the position you know right and get them out without you know paying for health care and, and you know and all that it's just a you know an easy way to you know, we people out, if you will, um, on the company side. So take advantage of those contract jobs and show up and show out because it right. really can turn into um, a full-time permanent position. So yeah, that's good. Morgan, you Absolutely. Thank you. This was, <laughs> this, was, this, was a, this was amazing. And I'm so glad to have this conversation because I feel like, it's needed. I feel like it's needed. You guys, it is. if this conversation has helped you out in any way, definitely let me know. Tag me on, you know, Instagram, uh, at Lakeisha Wooder, you know, tag me on Facebook, Living Her Truth. Let us know, you know, because I really want to have more conversation to help you where you are right now you know mm -hmm. um so i want to have more intentional conversations and you know this is my way of doing that so definitely let us know if you have any additional questions you know you can just reach out to me and we'll get those questions answered because i know this is this is a tough spot a lot of people, it is a lot of people are in and we want to be able to help you out um the best way that we can Morg, do you want to give your your website address so people can can go and check you yes out? Absolutely. It is www.tuesday at 1030.com. You know what? Tell them why you danged your company at Tuesday at 1030. Like, because this, well, this is another tip. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad that you asked that question. So um, I have been helping people for the past 10 years. It's just a passion for me to help others. Um, and so as my friend saw my passion, it was like, you know, you need to really start a business. And I've been thinking about it. And for me, it was all about, I wanted a unique name, nothing too fancy, but I wanted to have some type of meaning. And with my last name being Morgan, that's a very standard common name. And of course, you know, living in the state of Texas, we have to see if the name is, is available. And every iteration of Morgan was already taken. So um, at the time I was like, yeah, I want to start a business, but I got to come up with a company name first. You just like can't start a business without a company name that I mean that it takes time. So as I was interviewing for my role at my current employer, I was preparing for uh, interviewing for a promotion and I found an article on Forbes magazine said the best time to interview for a job is Tuesday at 1030. And this is why. Of course, this is prior to the pandemic, but they were just saying, hey, the best time to interview for a job is Tuesday at 1030. Um, one, you know, you don't want to interview for a job on Fridays or Mondays because typically things happen on the weekend. People may, may not show up on Mondays. You got the Monday blues. Um, Tuesday would give you, it's a sweet spot because it's not Monday where things may have happened on a weekend and people not show up for work. Um, and 1030 is a sweet spot because it's not at eight. And it's not, and it's right before lunch, but not right at lunch. So typically after your interview, uh, they usually, if they, if they like the person that they're interviewing for, it's like, Hey, you want to, want to go to lunch? And it actually extends the interview a little bit longer. Right. So, uh, that was, that was the reason why. And I was like, Oh, that's the name of my company Tuesday at 10 30. So 
that was the that's the origin behind behind the name i love that i love that so you guys when she told me that i'm like <laughs> okay, all of the major like conversations i need to have i'm gonna have them on tuesdays at 10 30 in the morning <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do because I thought that was so cool. But Morgan, Absolutely. thank you so much. You are the best. Absolutely. But before I let you go, please give us an yes. audio recommendation. You or or book recommendation. But you know, I'm addicted to Audible, so I love Audible. But give us an Audible or book recommendation that you've read that has inspired you in some way. I have three books. Okay. So the first one is um, The Circle Maker. Hmm. The Circle Maker. Okay. And this is by uh, Mark Batterson. Okay. It is a, uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. It is a Christian book, I have to say, but it says praying circles around your biggest dream and your greatest fears. Mm. I, this is on Audible. Um, and the author is the speaker. He has a great speaking voice because I'm sure you've heard some audibles where you're just like, I'm not really connecting with this person that's really, this narrator that's talking. Mm -hmm. He captivates you. He has a really great speaking voice. I've heard it on Audible, not once, but three times. I've read the book and I got the book because it was so, so many great nuggets. I had to get the book to highlight, to go back as a reference. So I've done both. And I would say with this, um, on my, in my prayer closet and on my prayer board, I pray for my next opportunity. Um, I pray for my teammates. I pray for my manager. I write my, lar my biggest fears when it comes to career and advancement. Um, and I put a circle around that where I want to go. And so this is one of the books that I, I highly recommend. I know it's not about careers, but definitely you can incorporate that um, within your whole process of like reading and, and helping you with your career. It's called The Circle Maker. Okay, I'm gonna check that one out. Yes, the next one, I would say this is the best book next to the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible first and then this book. It's called Knock Them Dead Resumes hmm. by Martin Yates. When I tell you, I was introduced to this book maybe 15 years ago. Um, it has been one of the best books ever. One, you can see I have a lot of sticky notes. Um, one, because it gives you great examples of resumes. Mm -hmm. And it gives it to you by industry. So if you're in law enforcement, you're in sales and marketing, if you're in banking and finance, operations, human resources. And it has like these little tabs where you can just go and get and get a layout of what what a cfo what a ceo resume looks like and it gives you some some tidbits and some language that you can incorporate into your resume so this is one of my absolute favorite books i actually have three versions of this book whoa mm -hmm. okay so this is the this is the ninth edition i think i the oldest edition i have is like maybe the fifth edition um, but I, I like the, the older edition, to be honest with you. But you can never go wrong with any of his books. It's called Knock Em Dead, Knock em Dead Resumes. And he also has one that says Knock Em Dead uh, Letterheads as well. Mm, okay. And so you, so you have the ninth edition. So I guess they update it every so often. Yes. Because I was listening to the memo, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. the memo. And she made a comment and she was just like, you know, update your resume because right. if you have on your resume proficient in Microsoft Word, they're going to throw your resume in the trash because it's, 20, it's 2020. Like everybody should be proficient in Microsoft Word. So that's a given. Yeah, it's a given. Right. Whereas, right. I don't know, what, 15 years ago? It mm -hmm. set you apart from everybody else. But right now it's a given. Like if you don't have, like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was the last one is what color is your parachute? And there's a different cup, different editions for this as well. So this is a really good book. It's for it's practical manual for job hunters and career changers. Um, so it gives you uh, different nuggets on uh, you know changing your career, things that you need to look for, uh, negotiating your salary. I mean, it's actually one of those books where. 
I would say you don't sit down and read it. You go through to figure out, oh, what's, what area I want to focus on. The six secrets of navigating, uh, of negotiating your contract, how to own your own business, five ways to choose and change your careers. So these are things that you can go through and like, oh, I want to read about this. Uh, 16 tips about interviewing for a job. So it's actually like, I call it, it's like a reference book. So it's not a book that you just want to sit down and read, but it's a, it's a great reference book. So those are my three absolutely favorites. Man, thank you for that. Those books are definitely going to um, help somebody out. You guys, I'll make sure to uh, find a link for those books and put it in the Audible link in the show notes because I put hard books and Audible books in that link. So definitely click that, click the link that's that's in the show notes. Thank you for that. Those are some really good books. You're so, welcome. Last question before I let you go. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase with your third word. Self-awareness, purpose, and transparency. Ooh, yes. I like that. Nobody has said transparency. That sums up my whole company right there. Because this is true. Yes. Self-awareness, purpose, and one of my core values is transparency. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Thanks. Morgan, you're the best friend. Yes. I really, truly enjoyed this conversation. Me too. Thank you so much. And I'm hoping that the nuggets that I shared help someone else. Definitely. I'm yeah. pretty sure they will. Pretty sure they will. Yeah.